In this video we're checking out the player created tool called Red Fox. As usual I need to emphasize that this is a video game and not real cybersecurity. In the browser right here we have the Red Fox website and it gives a good overview of the different features included in Red Fox. As you can see down here you have a bunch of different features. Some of them are going to cost BTC, uh, the Bitcoin currency, and some are going to be free. Uh, you will find the website by either searching for Red Fox and it's the second link or you can click on let's restart popular websites and then again it's the second link uh, and this is the website that you can grab Red Fox from as I mentioned you will need to buy some of these features not all of them are free and if you don't already have an account, you will need to register a BTC account. So you can find the BTC website by searching for BTC and it's the first link. Or you can click on popular websites and again it's the first link. We have all the instructions on how to set up uh, the BTC account. But for now I'm just going to, you can see that on the website. And you will just go into the downloads and grab the file called BTC, this script. Then in here you can register an account and you will also start, uh, you can also mine the bitcoins that you then can use to purchase the different uh, features inside Red Fox. So once you have um, your account set up and Red Fox downloaded, you can start Red Fox by just running the script. And this will give you the um, home screen. And what you can do then is you can uh, type R to register a new account and you would just pick a username and the password and so on. I already have done this so I will be using the account I've set up. And there are also some uh, shortcuts so what you can do when you launch the script is you can type your username and then it will prompt you for the password uh, so you don't need to go into the login screen every time. Uh, we're going to complete a mission, so I grab this academic changes mission and uh, uh, I think it's going to be a good way to test the tool out together. Um, I should mention that I've not used, um, I'm not a user of Red Fox, I don't use this tool normally. Uh, so I've just checked it out a bit before the video, um, but there are probably a, a lot of um, knowledge that I'm missing because I'm not a regular user of the tool. We will start it with the launch argument of the username and then it will ask us for the password. And in here we have a bunch of different things, so there are even games in here. I have not um, uh, tested those for this video, but um, it's something to check out. Uh, and as you can see a bunch of different features. This is uh, a very big tool. Probably the biggest tool in the game, um, as far as I know. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the H section, because we're going to try to complete this mission right here. Um, I've not purchased all of the features either, so um, I, I checked out a few of them uh, that we can use, um, uh, hopefully, to complete the mission. What you want to do um, when you are trying to get into or complete a mission or get into a target is you want to use the RE um, feature. We're going to type that. And uh, this is something that you are going to um, well become familiar with if you use Red Fox for an extended period of time that it's going to uh, exit and crash in various ways. Uh, unfortunately, I think part of this is due to how big it is and and that's kind of a, a compromise so um, it, It's going to be exiting on you quite frequently because of the limitations in how it's able to uh, sustain such a large amount of features and tools so We're going to start it again and the good thing about the launch arguments is that you can go back into whatever you were doing um, fairly quickly. So you can just type RE to again try to start this um, feature. 
and then you type the password. And this uh, gives us access to this uh, Excel tool. And what I think you do in here is you... I've already tested it on another IP, but we are going to try this one. So we're going to um, use the um, scan our host and then set the IP. And this is kind of like an nmap uh, function. So it's going to give us information of the server. In my previous um, player script uh, showcase, I compared it to another tool, so we're going to do that in this video as well, just to see how um, if if the if it shows the uh, relevant information. Here we go. So it found the main router, which is of course the same here. And then it shows port 80, port 3306, 3307, and port 25. And then there are three different computers that can be targeted with port 0. Um, so I think it has like almost all the information. The only thing missing is the uh, port 8080 on the router. But that's not, not something you can access from outside the network anyways. So uh, maybe it's going to show it if we were to perform the scan from inside the network. Because that's the only time you would actually need this information anyways. Okay, so we have set up the... Uh, our host. And then we can show options. Um, and it has two options for how you scan the target. You can either scan from the cloud database or from, uh, you can do something called a deep scan, which is um, uh, rescanning the library, which of course is slower, but uh, it will not miss any of the um, features. I just remembered that. I might need to... Eh, whatever, I think it's fine. Um, so... It's already set on L-host for us as well, so that's good. And that's the same that uh, the target is for, so... This is great. I think we are ready to try it. For... Yeah, so... Let's do scan our host, scan our host. Okay, yeah, so that's the nmap part that we already did. And then if you do scan l host then, scan l host. Okay, so if you then scan the l host, it's going to uh, use the cloud database to try and grab the different um, vulnerabilities. And it found um, a few, so then we can type help. And then we can go like this. And this is going to show us all the ones we got. Let me just double check this. Let's see here. 3306 and 7. So it we found a bunch of stuff on the 3306 and 3307. It also found the root password. That's great. And then we can just... Wow, it even found a root shell. Two of them. Does that mean that the admin is online, maybe? Okay, so we pick the... Wait, let's see here. What you do is you type... And then the ID. Perfect. 
and then uh, you type go session. There it is. And then we can use this by using the connect command. And then the ID that you can see by using show sessions. And now we have a root shell on the computer. And in here, there are even more commands. So we have like ls and cat and a bunch of stuff. So if we were to go into like ls, I don't think you can do it without. Yeah, you need to specify the uh, folder. I think you can also do la. Yep. And then what you can do is you can cat and uh, find the. Uh, passwords on the computer um, but before we do anything with that well we could we could grab the root password I guess so then there's the md5 command uh, right here and then you just provide the hash we already have the hash a bunch of places as well so uh, here and we already have the root shell, so we don't need it, but this is what you would do. And then you will find the password like this. Um, but I will think we want to um, go up the elevate. So I wonder if you can go back into the... I don't think we can use so we can try it. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that doesn't work. So if we were to try to because I want to show off the uh, elevation and since we're already root that doesn't make much sense. Okay, so we can go back into XShell, that's great. And now if we do show... And then we can pick a guest shell instead. So we pick number 8. There we go, and then we can use session 1, I guess. No. L. Connect. Okay. Connect. One. And there we go. Now we have a guest shell on here instead. And then we can back up again, I guess. And now we can try the elevate command. And that's going to download or upload some stuff. Okay, so it's uh, putting up a few of the tools as well as crypto and meta. And for some reason this always happens, at least in the version I'm using. So um, whenever you try to upload, it will crash. And so what you will have to do is you will have to restart it. But the good thing about the RE command is that it's going to save our sessions for us. So we don't actually need to uh, redo all the work again. Uh, see, the sessions are still here, so we can do uh, connect one. Now we can do elevate again. And the second time it usually works. There we go. Then there is a uh, brute uh, option that you can try. 
and if you don't have a word list or dictionary of your own you can use the online database one and it's going to try about 2000 passwords and that wasn't uh, you didn't find any matches so now we're going to try the privilege escalation and then we can either uh, rescan or use the cloud and I think I want to use the cloud because that's faster. So I think we found a bunch of stuff. There was a root access that it said there. Okay, still not done though. I guess we're going to be going in here with our... Okay, what did I do now? Okay, um, it found some good stuff in 3306, but can you say you want to use those? Let's not. Let's see what is in these two first. Okay, there are no shells on here, so that's unfortunate. We will need to rescan them. Mm. Fine. Let's do it. Um, and then it, uh, this one was a success. Which means that we have the um, the escalation was a success. It was able to go from a guest shell and give us the root information. We can also open a root shell. Uh, it still says guest, um, but I don't really know what that means. But if we type help, we can see that there's a migrate option to do my. Uh, I don't remember the password though, let's do that again. Because if you give it the root password, which is now Red Fox, um, then we can migrate which is going to start the terminal as a root for us. Um, so this was both like uh, gaining access from the outside the network and then um, escalating the privileges on the network. I don't know if there are any ways of um, starting the tool on the net or on the server, the target. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to upload um, the tool on to the target like this um, so that we can test out the local um, abilities as well I'm just very curious about the Okay, so the, we are the only uh, the only one on on the server. There's no M there are no NPCs on the server. So that's good. Okay, this I forgot to put my username. You can use the login screen as well if you want. And then we are going to use the I think RE again so we already sh showed the escalate privileges uh, which work and then we can
Okay, so it, it doesn't seem like the 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 um, R host and L host that we set on the previous server uh, are that's probably tied to that server. So we will we will need to set the information here as well. So we're going to use scan R host, and then we're just going to need to see what the IP was. And in here, um, okay, that's quite disappointing. I was hoping there would be more stuff on the network deeper inside. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, there's nothing on this network. Well, I, I don't even know that because I didn't scan it from inside network, so that doesn't make any sense. But uh, I did on here, so we're going to trust that. Um, okay. So we, we managed to get access and we have everything we need to complete the mission, I guess. Let's now see if it's possible to uh, clear our traces on the server. So, uh, well, what you would need to do first is, of course, complete the missions. Let's do that very quickly. Viewed and viewer. Ned. Here we go. Economy. Increase the qualification, uh, the academic qualifications by at least one point. So, eight, for example, two points. Save. So that's the mission completed, and now we want to see if tool can uh, clean up uh, after itself. We can take a look here and see if um, what the what it what it did when it uploaded itself. Hmm. So it put uh, a bunch of stuff in the lib folder right here and then i uploaded it to here and then it created this folder right here with these things and this folder okay so it, it created a few folders and a few files let's see if we can get rid of that i think it's in the s section security um, and in here we have uh, system log delete all files uploaded by the tool and clean all Red Fox tools installed on the computer. So I think we're going to go with CT. Okay, so that removed stuff, I think. And then we're going to use CS. Now it's cleaning the system. Well, it's downloading the system cleaner. <laughs> and now it's cleaning the system. Okay, so, and then let's see what it did to the log file. Okay, so it, it, it has a deletion in the log file, that's not good. That's going to get uh, you traced. 
So we don't want to keep that. Let's remove it for now. Uh, yeah, let's see what it did. So maybe be careful if you use uh, the uh, auto cleanups um, tool because you might leave uh, deletion logs. What do we have here? That's nice. It removed the folders it uh, created in the root folder, but it didn't remove the. Um, files that were placed in lib but of course those were placed when I uh, uploaded um, and when I was um, gaining access to the server remotely so uh, maybe there are some other features that can be used to remove those I don't know if that's the case but for now I guess we're going to be removing them manually from here not too big of a deal. Oh wait. No wait, it wasn't lib. It wasn't lib. Okay. Uh well, let's do something like this. And then we're just gonna remove these files and folders there might be some kind of cleanup uh, thing uh, but I haven't found it so it seems to just clear out the uh, folders created by the um, Red Fox running and not the uploaded remote um, vulnerability uh, script. Okay. Um, what else? We should probably remove the script as well before we leave. So uh, so the only I have only found these two. I can show them one more time. Oh no, that's not what I want to do. Oh, since I removed meta exploit, it can't uh, run anymore. That's interesting. Never mind then. I'll show it from the other computer. There we go. And then we just. Um, I'm gonna start a new terminal. Red Fox, wait, with their username. There we go. And what I was going to say was that I've only found clean system and clean tools. I don't know of any other uh, cleaners in the tool. Maybe there are some that I haven't found. Um, so that's those shown. Um, some other features 
we, we have enough so that we can complete the mission. I guess we can do that. So, yes. Customer satisfied with the job, so it was perfectly uh, fine to complete the mission with this tool right here. Um, some other features. Um, the Red Fox tool has a... Um, proxy, this one. Um, a proxy feature, so what you type is EY and that's going to download it and again you can see the timeout and a limitation based on how big it is I think uh, but thankfully we can start the um, EY from the launch argument. And it has very, a very nice map. Looks cool. I think it's just visual though. And what then you can do is you can um, if we do this, let's see here, this. Um, you can see that I've already added a proxy. Um, and what it does when you add a proxy is that it um, uh, secures it, uploads something to it, I think, and then changes the password of it. Uh, so you just uh, add like this, add the IP and then the password to the uh, SSH server uh, and once that's done you can I think go back and then connect well maybe even, let's see here what, what happens if you type bounds okay you can set an end bounds IP or ID these are the probably the IDs the 0, 1, 2, 3 and then you can delete them and you can clean, uh, remove server that doesn't work anymore. Okay, so uh, then once you have a uh, proxy server um, in the list, you can use connect. And that's going to route you through all the proxy servers and connect to the end one that you selected or the last one in the list. So now we are on the... Uh, proxy server that I set up uh, which is a nice feature so let's go back see here what else we can show so there are a bunch of features and I won't have enough time to go through even all the ones I've tested and then there are even more beyond the ones I've tested let's go back into H and see if there's anything left here uh, so we did show off the these two and then there's a player spy we can open it but I'm not gonna uh, go into detail it's also a, a good or interesting feature that you won't see in pretty much any other tool as far as I know so uh, I, I should probably say that this tool is quite like slow and cumbersome to use because it stops working when it needs to restart and stuff like that but in terms of features, it's probably the, the biggest and most, most feature-rich uh, tool you can find. So a good use might be to combine this tool with a, a more lightweight and faster script. Uh, so that this can do the heavy, heavy lifting and then you have something else that is uh, quicker uh, for the, the uh, more mundane tasks. Uh, so in here you can like... Uh, uh, target different IPs and see if they're or or uh, I think player is like uh, if you know a player IP you can add that to the list uh, your IP list and then you can listen for changes on these IPs that you place and see if people are logging in or out find is like it start to scan uh, a bunch of different IPs and look for players you can also use this uh, on text files so if you have like a list of interesting IPs uh, that are 
and have potential players on them. That might be a good use for this. If you just get, start scanning random IPs, you're not going to have much luck because there are like 4 billion IPs in the game. So the chances that you will actually find a player is astronomical. Uh, watch is, I think, just a tool that you can use to uh, see the results of the find script. Uh, so that can essentially run forever and then you can have the output printed here. And then spy is like... Um, I think you can set it up to uh, look for... Uh, if you have a an IP that is interesting, maybe there's a player on there. You can have the spy to uh, look for changes on that IP and see if that player... If it perhaps is a player IP or not. Uh, something like that. I haven't tested it in depth, I just... Took a quick look earlier. Uh, another limitation in the tool is that once you've started one of these tools, so in here you can see you can go back, but once you actually uh, launch one of them, you can't go back into the main menu, so you will have to exit and restart the tool. Uh, so that's what's the H. Then, do we have anything else in here? Um, so this is cool. I should probably show this. It has a database. And this is also one of the best parts of this tool, in my opinion. Uh, what it does, uh, though, is it takes a long time to load. Let's just co compare it again. We're going to be looking at a libsh.so. That's nice. So you can select which lib you want to uh, look at. So we want to look at the SSH. And then we can see how many. Uh, so first of all, up here, you can see how many vulnerabilities that you can that are in each uh, stored in the database for each library. And then you can even see for each version how many different uh, vulnerabilities there are stored. Uh, so let's just uh, pick 2.0.9. So you just select number 6. And then you can see like the memory addresses and the unsecure values. And if uh, it knows what kind of what type of um, uh, vulnerability it is. Uh, and the best part about this database is that it's shared among all the players that use Red Fox. So if someone else has scanned the library before you, you can use the cloud that I already showed to um, uh, perform a quick scan without the need to wait for a load bar uh, or the, the bar that is loading um, during a scan. So it's a much uh, more efficient way of doing things than um, pretty much any other tool that you uh, that, that does not use a database. Uh, so we can just uh, take a look here. What did I say? Two. We can see that 2.0.9. And uh, all of these are unknown, but down here we have one that is a file. So, yes, a guest file. And then down here we have a computer. And that's a guest computer. And then, of course, depending on what, uh, what the server looked like when somebody did this scan, they're going to have more or less objects returned. So in this case, there were not a lot of objects, there were just two objects found. While when I've scanned this library before, I have uh, been more lucky with uh, the objects returned, so I have more of them stored. But that, of course, is going to change depending on uh, what the um, network actually looks like. Uh, another thing is that you can actually export this data. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, function of this is, but uh, it seems like it's just saving this information in a text file on your computer. So if you want to store this information for some reason, you can uh, do that with the export command. So as you can hear, a bunch of this is my guessing. I, I, I don't... it's not a tool I use normally, so... I'm doing my best reviewing it, but uh, if I'm wrong, that, that that is why. That is why I'm wrong. So, were those the in most interesting utilities? Um, 
the brow file browser I think is just what we already showed. You go into file browser. Okay, I need to wait again. Uh, IP info is just like a who is combined with a um, some router information and local um, uh, local and public IP information. So yeah. Um, this looks interesting. So the file browser, it uh, gives you the entire uh, file system tree. This is also something you can do uh, um, once you have remote access by typing sys. And then you have the file system here and you can select a folder. And then it's going to show you what's in the folder and you can go back and uh, browse the entire file system like this. Mm. I've not tried the Wi-Fi tools, but that's also a feature in here. It also have a Dropbox. Uh, I'm not gonna show it, but what it does is you can connect a, a rental server uh, set, uh, like it's gonna ask you for the IP, username and password. And then you can set them to sync uh, the Dropbox folder on the two uh, servers. So uh, the Dropbox folder on this server is going to then upload or download things to the uh, Dropbox folder on the um, server that you set it up with. We can, we can, uh, let's see here. So if you look in the root folder, which is where it's created, here uh, dash root dash dropbox and you can see that it has a dropbox.config file and then a, 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 a file that i uh, tested it with uh, that was synced between the two servers that's kind of cool so all the files you put uh, put into this file uh, this folder the dropbox folder once you run the dropbox dropbox uh, function or uh, tool it's going to uh, upload that if you set it to upload or download it depending on what what the settings you chose okay and library analytics um that's pretty much i guess we can show that one so la it's pretty much just going to scan the library local libraries and you can pick uh, which one you like so here we have the init the net and the ssh and then we can just uh, pick the init and it's going to scan it and it's going to uh, give you the uh, information uh, of the library so this is pretty much scan lib um, from the uh, shop Okay, let's go back and see if there's anything else that I should show before we end the video. There is one thing that I thought was kind of cool. Um, if there's time, I guess I'll, we'll see. Um, I might show that as well. Let's see if anything left in you. I don't think so. And then S. That's the two we already use. Um, I think we already showed the proxy as well. And that's those. It has some more nefarious things as well. Um, the rat, stuff like that. Um, and we already showed part of that. And then there's a few games as well. Uh, miscellaneous things. 
Um, yeah, what I'm going to do lastly is I'm going to go off the local. Um, so let's just, uh, pick H. Uh, because uh, this tool has one of uh, a feature that uh, most tools don't at the moment. So I want to show that as the last thing. So we're going to go back into RE. And then we're going to scan our host. and it has already saved the session because i tried it on here before so uh, go session because i guess now perfect so we're going to use session no that's not connect connect zero perfect and then we are going to use elevate I think it might crash again which is of course unfortunate and we're also going to go in with our own tool So, we could try to root force again, but it didn't find anything. So then we go in to cloud. And yes. Number one. So we have the root password here, and I don't exactly know why it still says yes, but it does. And it doesn't give us uh, the. So it's Red Fox, of course. It changes all passwords to Red Fox uh, by default. Um, so then we're going to help. And we're going to migrate. And then red box. And now we can put the tool on here. Oh, I already have it on here when I tested it. That's great. Um, so then we can just run it. And we want to run it on this IP right here. Whoop. Want to start it with the username. Could have picked the RE as well. I think that's what you're going to be used. Uh, that's that's the main thing you're going to be using this tool for. Actually, there are a bunch of cool features, but uh, the main thing is the XL. And now we're going to scan our host. And this is a nice feature. So as you can see, uh, before when we scanned this, we only saw the uh, computers on the main router as well as some of the sub routers. I think it was the same for this tool. We, we can't know that because it deletes all the history, but um, once you actually run it from inside the network, it will show you the entire network. So um, deep inside the network with all the computers and routers and stuff like that, it shows that. It even shows um, where there are firewall rules. It doesn't show the firewall rules. I haven't figured out if, that's, uh, if there's some command or feature for that. But at least it shows um, uh, that there are firewall rules as well. They are... Let's see here if I can find them. Uh, okay, I can't. 
I thought there were firewall rules on here. It says that as well. Okay, no matter. Um, so let's go in here. Just shell. was a red fox I think so let's just make sure that's correct no it has to be red fox I'm pretty sure no oh yeah of course that's not what I want to do oh my bad wow that's not nice okay this is this is not nice at all. There we go. So uh, there are firewall rules, like you can see, um, but we don't know. It tells us that there are six of them, but I haven't figured out how you can view them. You see them up here. And then it shows off the main router and all the uh, computers connected to that. And then the next router and all the computers connected to that. Um, and then it shows Okay, that's very interesting. So, let's see here, 168, 12, dot three. Okay, so, so something has actually bugged out here. It's very, very interesting. So, Previously, when I uh, scanned this IP, it had question marks here. Um, uh, no, it, it had question, question marks here, and it said, like, uh, uh, unreachable or something. And uh, now, for some reason, it's actually able to see beyond the firewall. It still says that it has deny rules, but for some reason, the tool is able to see beyond the firewall. Uh, while my tool tool does not see beyond the firewall this time. Okay, I don't know what that is all about, but uh, carrying on down here, uh, you can see that it can also see the um, uh, open ports that are not port forwarded. So again, deep within the network, and uh, you have information on all these uh, different computer objects or, or uh, computers and servers. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show. Um, those were some of the most interesting features, I think, in the Red Fox script. It's a great tool, um, especially great um, as the heavy lifter in your uh, arsenal. Um, maybe not the fastest thing, especially since it um, um, quits quite often, so you have to restart it. So it uh, would be great to be paired up with something faster and more nimble. 
um, yeah so I think that's it for this video uh, like I mentioned in the last video I have a, a discord server now set up if you want to join um, since that's a popular was a popular request um, you can like um, subscribe and leave a comment and all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one